Hi, I'm Professor David Musial, and I need to share with you how I met Brady Cudmore. I've been asked this question so many times, and the story is, is truly, it's very unique, okay? Uh, 2007. <laughs> Brady is often compared to, or humbly said to be the next, David Letterman meets Neil Patrick Harris, meets Stephen Colbert, meets Phil Collins, meets Freddie Mercury, meets Johnny Carson, meets Gary Larson, and Matt Groening, to David Bowie all in one. Woo! The reality? Brady is just Brady, a brilliantly multi-talented, humble, yet dynamic little guy from a potato field in the beautiful PEI, Prince Edward Island, Canada, who is explosively taking the entertainment world, well, by storm. It's the Kenji, I love you Brady! With you I Like Prince, Madonna, Sting, Cher, Bono, Beck, Eminem, Moby, Fabio. Now there is Brady. On August 12, 2014, the United States Patent and Trademark Office granted One World Artist LLC the registered trademark for the solo name Brady. No other recording artist can use this singular name. James Brady Cudmore is now just simply Brady, just the way he always was. Hey guys, this is Brady Cudmore checking in with you. I'm a member of, a very proud member actually, of uh, Smart Tracks Media, as well as a uh, graduate of its program, uh, alongside of Next Gen Stars. <laughs> here in the United States for nine years and it's been an absolutely incredible journey. I've had the opportunity to meet so many incredibly gifted people, ones that have touched my life in a way that I could have never imagined. Originally hailing from Prince Edward Island, Canada, I really didn't see uh, a lot of opportunities to perform on giant stages. Although I did have the ambition, I never once imagined that I would be standing here in a gorgeous recording studio in Jersey City. We literally have a view of World Trade Center right from this recording studio that I'm standing at right now. But essentially, working with David Musial um, has been an absolute dream. What's provided me is so many opportunities to perform, whether it be uh, national tours, providing positive messaging music to children, adults, teens, grandchildren, grandfathers, grandmothers. But essentially what it comes down to is that I had this opportunity to perform for hundreds of thousands of people um, all because of Smart Tracks and because of Next Gen Stars. What I do find absolutely amazing about this is that I've performed at Disney, Pentagon.
now going to have a uh, special presentation by Associate Professor David Musial and Brady Cudmore. Let me tell you a few things about these guys you're about to meet here. And Brady Cudmore, who you're going to hear from in just a moment, he's a recording artist for Smart Tracks, and he travels the entire country. He records music for Smart Tracks, and he performs in schools all over the place with a positive message to youth. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Professor David Musial, Brady Cudmore, and a song that they've written about preventing substance abuse and how everyone can make an impact in the fight against drug abuse. The song is called Impact. Brady is a dynamic songwriter, singer, entertainer, and actor, and to realize his dream of becoming a pop performer in the Niagara Falls area. He has done shows all over North America, including three in Disney and the DARE International Training Conference and one at the Pentagon. Would you please stand as Brady comes to the stage? In the home of the brave. and he made all of our dance moves become crisp and fantastic and it did, we couldn't have done it without him. Mm. Hey there guys, this is Brady with Next Gen Stars, currently at 11 Times Square, hanging out, uh, getting ready to start my next act in my performance at Verbo. Uh, 11 times square. It's great. It's been very busy. All right, thanks guys. We're going to be singing and dancing and all that kind of stuff, and I'll see you soon. Bye. Oh, yeah! This is a good song!
Fitzpatrick checking in with you from Wisconsin. And if I could afford Dr. Phil, I would get his help immediately. Brenda said for me to look for the red light. Concerned moms, a lot of them, right? We're all strong moms up here on the YouTubes and I'm actually widowed. It took me a long time, moms, to get over that. They call me uh, Tammy the Tiger and um, I can see why, you know. Brenda! And I'm trying to be a little quiet because my daughter, Brenda, who I'm about to talk about, is uh, taking her two o'clock nap. Brenda! I got a daughter. Her name's Brenda. She's 15 and I'm very proud of her. She taught me about these things called emoticons or emojis and I gotta tell you, I don't necessarily understand them. These cartoon selfies of animals and people and smiley faces, which I do understand. A sad face means that somebody might not be feeling too happy about something. I'm concerned that she might be doing drugs. I also threw out all of her Epsom salts. I like to protect my daughter Brenda and keep her guarded as much as possible. Epsom salts. But I also don't want to coddle her. I'm actually a concerned mom about it. I do apologize. You know, I, I, I sent a big old, you know, big old mom apology. Just saying, here's my momology. Of course I'm a concerned mom. And I'm Tammy the Tiger. I don't mess with Tammy. And everybody knows that at church. And uh, thank you for stopping into uh, what you talking about, Tammy. <laughs> Amateurs. <laughs> Doritos presents the Chip Squad. Spicy Nacho. Cool Ranch. Spicy Sweet Chili. And the Big Nacho Cheese. Hey ladies, want some pretzels? <laughs> Amateurs. <laughs> hey guys, I'm Brady and this is my friend Eric. Say hi, Eric. Hi, Eric. Eric's my best friend. We have a lot of things in common. When I like to sing, and Eric likes to sing, right? Eric? But I'm actually not from here either. I feel like most people aren't from New York that live here. I mean, there are, they're like unicorns. Like when you meet them, you're like, oh my God, I can't believe somebody's actually from New York. What is the official national anthem of Canada? A, O Canada. B, Canada, Canada. C, Snow Canada. D, ironic, by Atlanta Sports Ed. <laughs> um, it's definitely okay. You got it right! 
but I wish it was ironic. <laughs> what percentage of Americans have been employed at McDonald's at some point in their life? One in ten. No. Did I? Yeah. Ah! He's a really nice guy and he brings a lot of value. Just because he doesn't know who's on the $100 bill in either country, it's fine. I've had a $100 bill once. I may mean, not know a lot of things about a lot of things, but what I do know is that our friendship is real. Yeah. There are certain things that I do excel in. I feel more comfortable being in America with my friends because I've made so many amazing friends since I've been here. I feel like I enrich their lives the way that they enrich mine. Absolutely. I don't think he could have laughed at anyone more than he could have laughed at me if I had gotten all the answers right. Right. It's just a matter of what you do to contribute. To a community, to a culture, to a society. It's the U.S. and New York City. And I'm happy to be here too. Yeah! Number one talk show in Buffalo. It's Janet Snyder and Nicholas Pickles. Brady, hi. How are you? I'm <laughs> good. How are you? It took me a long time to get to that point. Oh, well, I want to just play a little bit about this is uh this is your song Rip Jeans. Yes. I'm playing it right now. Gimme, gimme, never get unless you're hot <laughs> like me. S -s 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 Superstar, we all know who you are. Rock and rolling in that Rip Jeans. I gotta have them ripped. Love it. That's yeah. awesome. <laughs> Thank but you. But you should open for Lady Gaga because it's got that like funky vibe. You know what I mean? Yeah. For an exclusive performance from our boy, Lady. Gimme, gimme, never get. Promise me you won't forget. Gimme, gimme, never get. Unless you're hot like me. <laughs> Do you think that's an, an apt description of, of what you do? Yes, uh, some of the music that's out there currently, mm -hmm. so it's still a positive message. But you, uh, you're you writing your own music. Brady, I gotta ask you something, man to man. All right. When you're on stage and you have all those screaming girls down there, yes. how do you remember the words of that song? How do you, <laughs> how, you know, how do you just keep going up there? I mean, that just lessons be... is splashing back Yeah, yeah, you know what? I, I could say, I think it's a lot of rehearsal. <laughs> and are trying to single out specific girls because you're, you're really scared. You're really scared at one point because there's all these people and they're dancing, they're shouting, and they're screaming, and they're going crazy. You want to make sure you put on a good show. Back in the building and doing what we do, we're live and we're in effect doing it the only way we know how. We love to make sure that everybody enjoys this, and I want you to be a part of what we're doing this weekend. We have Nikenji and my homie, BC, that's what I call him. I want to put a little hip to him. We are in rehearsal <laughs> for just one of our many shows that you'll see. <laughs> I'm Sasha Spielvogel, and I'm the artistic director of Labyrinth Dance Theater, and I'm the choreographer and producer. And I'm very happy to be able to talk about Brady today because he was a wonderful person to work with. He was very helpful, he's very talented, he's very cheerful, and we have remained friends since the production he was in that I did in 2015 called Come Back Once More So I Can Say Goodbye. I can get struck by Step kick, step kick. I'm Roger, of course. Uh, I'm a sound healer. I'm grateful for Brady because Brady is a trip. I had the joy of working with him uh, on a couple of projects, particularly the one Alvin Alley. Did I say that clearly? Alvin Alley. And uh, it was great. He had to guide us through it. And he had everybody's musical part down. Well, hello. I'm uh, Larry Yates. Uh, I'm uh, a retired uh, teacher, psychologist, technologist. I. Uh, retired from Columbia University a few years ago. I am a, uh, a, also a writer, and I, did, I wrote many plays, and uh, I wrote my first musical a few years ago uh, called Find the Golden Bird. And we auditioned many, many performers for the show, and uh, uh, we, we weren't quite finding the right 
lead, the right young hero. And, uh, but one of our um, uh, major actors uh, recommended a fellow by the name of Brady, and Brady Cudmore. And uh, Brady came and uh, knocked us out. Hello, everyone. It's a privilege and an honor to speak about my friend, Brady, a man that I've met many years ago, but he just loves what he does. He loves music, he loves to sing, he loves to produce. I've seen him live and watching a bunch of people, girls screaming, Carnegie Hall. He gets up on stage and he lights up. He's like the next Billy Idol, the next superstar just off the stage. He's a sparkle. Tell me to shut my 
mouth and open up my eyes to see that you're the only one who sees through my disguise. Kill me with desire and hug my lies, but you can do, do, do better. Shut my mouth and open up my ears to hear all of the common spoken through the years of all your love given to me, but you can do, do, do better. Oh, better. Dun, dun, do, da. Okay, here's how we met Brady. Hi, Professor David Musial here at Next Gen Stars. Wow, look at this. Here I am reflecting at the Jacob Chavez Center, heart of New York City. It was 2007, the Audio Engineering Convention, the AES show. It happened right down here. There was a seminar set up for college recruiting. I was volunteering my time, not on campus time, to attend this two-hour recruiting seminar. And what happens is that high school students, college students, they come and they ask questions about a university, okay? So, I had a table set up for myself, and then I was helping the Bob Moog Foundation, and I was with his daughter, Michelle Moog Kusa, and I arranged for her to get a table, and we launched the student division of the Bob Moog Foundation right here at the Javis Center in New York City. The doors opened and hundreds of people rushed down these escalators. The first person to come to my table is an older lady, so she starts talking to me, and I did my first sentence, and then, I see from across the hall, there's this little figure coming over, and then he starts a mad dash, and he almost knocks her over. I say, excuse me, are you two together? I thought maybe it's his mother, mother, son, etc. And I can give my you know, presentation one time. He goes, oh no, my name is Brady Cudmore, and I drove 20 hours from PEI, Northern Canada, just to look at microphones. I'm thinking to myself, PEI, Prince Edward Island, Muscles, Restaurants. Uh, I, I know Canada pretty well, but I didn't know this place. And then he says that he drove 20 hours. I thought, what? Do you live way up in a tundra with polar bears? Okay, he continues very fast. He goes, I'm a high school senior. He looks like a freshman. He says, I'm looking for a school for music and technology. I'm moving to New York because I want to be a pop star. And the first person we see is Phil Ramone, the greatest producer on earth, the most amount of Grammys. And so I conducted an interview with the two of them where I just finished doing a, a, an interview process with Michelle Moog, who's the daughter of uh, Dr. Robert A. Moog. And um, well, what do I do next? I decided to go inside and and explore you know, the thousands of people who are looking at the exhibits. And I come here on a regular basis and I get a chance to see some friends I haven't seen in a while. And I was about to enter right here. I get a tap on the shoulder. I look and it's Brady. I didn't remember his name. I kind of remembered his face. I just talked to a couple hundred people. And he says, can I sing for you right now? So the day after Matt Brady, he took my advice and he and his crew went to Manhattan, Times Square area to County Records and he picked up a karaoke CD track. He'd never been in a vocal booth. And that's when it happened. And then I said, can you sing harmony? He goes, well, how? I'd never been in a recording studio. Interesting, most seniors have a CD. He had nothing. He comes to New York and shoots a music video. <laughs> So we decided to take a tour about a mile away to Hoboken. Uh, we go and see Benny Tadino, the famous opera singer in Hoboken, and Benny says, when he heard, I asked, you know, Brady goes, sing something for Benny. Instantly, Brady just pops into something, and Benny's mouth dropped. Brady and his crew, they went inside to get a slice of pizza, and Benny says to me, David, I've never heard an untrained voice with such amazing intonation. You have my blessings. We had to meet my friend Frank Serafini, the sound designer from Hollywood, standing right underneath the area where Brady wanted to sing for me the day before. And I said, hey, Brady, this is Frank. Frank Asmin, you know, some of you may know, is probably the most famous sound designer in Hollywood. Star Trek, Tron, Spaceballs, Hunt for the Red October, Day After, um, Spider-Man, I believe, and Iron Man, rather. And I mean, the list goes on and on. It's, it's hard to say what hasn't Frank done. I've known him for like 30 years, a good friend, okay? I said, Brady, sing something for Frank. And Frank was very impressed. Three times at dinner, Frank says, you know, you gotta sign that kid. Just out of curiosity, I dialed the number. Greetings, Cudmore residents. Brady speaking, can I help you? Yeah. He left his phone number. 
have an interest in writing a song? And I explained what I do with Smart Tracks. He says, well, yeah, I guess. So long story short, next day in a mail, email, I get a song. It's called Dream It. It is his voice on it. It's pretty good. Well, long story short, I flew up to PEI, my production company. We sign him a venture. He's going to come to New York for, you know, for college. He's going to you know, be here for at least two years, maybe four. And that's how it all started. And I called some of my producing associates from around the world, actually, and told them the story. And they heard the song. And one after another, they just volunteered to help out. Frank Serafini, I called and said, Frank, you told me to sign them. Now it's your turn, produce a song for us. And they did, it's called Freedom, it's beautiful. And I was working with Bill Lewis at the time in the Kenji, and he gave me a budget to hire some of the best musicians in New York to record his song called I Want It Again. He wanted to be a duet. So Brady and Kenji sang it. And Kenji, God bless you, she's done so many amazing things here. Um, we hired uh, Dion Parson, incredible percussionist. Does a lot of jazz in Lincoln Center to play the drums. And um, um, an amazing bass player. And uh, Carlos came in and he played guitars and he knew John Lennon. He helped co-write the song Fame with David Bowie and tremendous credentials, over 30 golden platinum records. And they all came together and helped us to create his first song with Rob Harari, an amazing engineer producer who I hired to be a professor. And we used his studio and on my non-academic time and we created this masterpiece and, and many others. And that's how it started. And then my friend Steve Clark, multi-platinum producer from Europe, heart of gold, brilliant musician, brilliant producer. He stepped in and he started doing some songs with us. And my friend Martin Barrett in Toronto, incredible writer-producer, uh, Whitney Belker from Miami. She is the founder of the music producer software company. Brady's endorsed by it. She got involved and, oh my goodness, uh, Storm, a hip-hop producer here in New York, and um, Manny Medina, another great artist and producer, and the list goes on and on. So many have stepped forward to help out, it's incredible. And Biddy Q, oh my goodness, we've done so many different things with, with Q, Q Love. Um, you're gonna hear from him in a little bit. So that's um, how it all got started. This is the great Phil Ramon, and it's amazing that he's in, he was interested in working with Brady next. And there's Les Paul and Dave Brubeck, and here's Bob Moog, the first time I met him, and here's the last time I saw him when he accepted to be the first person to christen my program, the greatest music technology inventor on earth. And after we met his daughter and I signed Brady, I talked to the Moog company, and they endorsed Brady. So on his first album, there's a little fatty Moog keyboard, the one that won the award at the Audio Engineering Convention, and it's all because of Bob Moog. Over here we have Professor Rob Harari, a producer as well I mentioned earlier, who's been helping Brady a lot, with Julio Fernandez from Spyro Gyra. Four gold records, a Grammy Award, working here with Brady on this new project. And down here is Carlos Alomar. Over here is Bill Lewis, who wrote many hit songs. He gave us a song, I Want It Again, that McKinsey sang. And that was the very first, very serious professional recording that Brady had made.